Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with blueberry cornmeal galette. That's right, I like making pie just as much as the next guy who likes pie. But what I like making even more than pie is a galette. Right, I just think they're more fun, and I like the freedom that the rustic appearance affords. But mostly I think I just enjoy the higher crust to fruit ratio, since that is my favorite part of a pie. So with that, let's go ahead and get started with the dough that will eventually become the crust. And that's going to start with some all-purpose flour, to which we will add some salt. Plus, as you may have guessed from the title, we're also going to add some cornmeal. And once all that's in there, we'll give everything a quick mix with our pastry blender. And not only is the cornmeal going to add some textural interest, it's also, for whatever reason, a great flavor pairing with blueberries. In fact, I'm going to have to check to see if I've done a blueberry cornbread, because if not, I need to. But anyway, once we've given that a mix, we'll go ahead and add some very cold cubed up butter. Right, the colder the better. And what we'll do is stir that to coat it with the flour. And then we'll begin working it over with our pastry blender, which is also called a pastry cutter. And what's going to happen here is those metal wires are going to cut through the butter. And then those pieces get coated with flour. And as we continue to press that through the mixture, those pieces of butter get cut smaller and smaller until eventually we're left with something that looks like coarse crumbs. And no, when we're done, not all the pieces of butter are going to be the same size. Okay, the smallest pieces might be the size of lentils, with the biggest pieces maybe being the size of small peas. And in case this is your first crust, it's all those little pieces of butter that are going to make our crust flaky. And by the way, you can do this by pulsing on and off in a food processor, but for me, the pastry cutter is the best tool. And then once our butter and flour mixture looks a little something like this, we'll go ahead and drizzle in some ice cold water while stirring with a fork but we don't want to do it all at once. So we'll drizzle a little in and we'll give it a stir and it should start to clump up. And then we'll go ahead and add a little more and we'll keep stirring and observing. And as soon as we have about six or seven tablespoons in, we can start to check it with our fingers because what we're trying to do is get this to a point where this has just enough moisture for our dough to come together and stay together. But at the same time, we don't want to add too much water. Otherwise it's going to be kind of tough and doughy. And once we do feel like we've reached that point, we will turn this mixture onto our work surface and we'll bring it together with our hands and basically press it into a disc of dough. And when I do these videos, I always want everything to work out nicely, but at the same time, I'm glad when they don't. Because right here, I thought I was okay with the moisture level, but as I went to push and press this together, you can see I had a dry crumb explosion and it was very obvious this was a little too dry. But as you know, we never let the food win. So I picked up that clump that was sticking together and I dripped a little more water onto the drier stuff and also a few more drops on top, at which point, as you will see, it had just enough moisture to hold together. And believe me, that would have been pretty easy to edit out, like some of the other YouTube chefs might have. But there's a good chance that will happen to you sometime. And that's exactly how you fix it. Oh, and I should mention because of the cornmeal, the texture is gonna be a little bit grittier and a little bit crumblier. So that does make it a little bit trickier to gauge how much water to add. But bottom line, we do have to add enough so we can roll this out without it falling apart. And then what we'll do once we have that pressed into a nice round thick disc is we will wrap that in plastic and we'll pop it in the fridge for at least a half hour or until it's nicely chilled before we work with it. And while that's in the fridge, we can move on to our blueberry filling, which starts with the freshest, sweetest blueberries we can find. And then to those, we will add a little bit of freshly grated lemon zest, which is where, as you know, most of that lemon flavor resides. And that is optional, but also mandatory. So put it in. And then speaking of mandatory, we're also going to have to add some sugar, as well as some cornstarch. And I'm just going to add a little bit, because I don't want a very thick, gelatinous filling. Okay, I just want enough to tighten those juices up a little bit. And then once that's in, we'll give this a quick mix. So our starch and sugar gets distributed evenly, at which point we'll stop and add the last ingredient, about a tablespoon of freshly squeezed lemon juice. And yes, I do see that lemon seed. And no, I'm not going to tell you if it was noticed and removed. All right, in the business, we call that proprietary information. But anyway, what we'll do is give that a good mix, at which point we'll just set that aside while we move on to rolling out our dough, which has now been thoroughly chilled. And as usual, we'll use just enough flour so it doesn't stick to the surface or our rolling pin. And because this dough is cold and stiff, we want to start out kind of slow, rolling this a little bit one way and a little bit the other. 
But as it warms up, things will get a little easier. And as this gets thinner and larger, you will almost certainly get a little bit of cracking around the edges, which is totally fine and normal. In fact, if you don't get any cracking, you probably had too much moisture in your dough. And regarding the cracks, if you want, you can stop. Before we get out to the full size, which is gonna be about 15 inches, and we can kind of push and press those spots together to get something a little more uniform. But having said that, a galette is considered a very rustic pastry, which in the language of chefs translates to, it doesn't really have to look that great, or at least that exact and that perfect. So an irregular edge is not considered a bad thing, but I'm sorry I couldn't help myself. And we do eventually need to get this off the surface and onto a pan. So during this process, make sure it's not sticking. And a good way to prevent that would be to flip it over and make sure both sides have enough flour. And that's it, once it is rolled out large enough, which like I said is about 15 inches, give or take, I'm gonna stop and grab my pizza cutter and sacrifice a couple tablespoons of dough around the edge to make it look just a little neater. And I'll be honest, as I was doing this, I was thinking, you shouldn't even be doing this. I mean, it's a galette. It's rustic. It doesn't matter what the edges look like. But even knowing that, I still sometimes feel a little bit insecure about how these things look in the pictures. Yes, the contractually obligated pictures. And occasionally, like this occasion, I do give in to those insecurities. So the point is, you don't need to do this. Nobody does. But whether you've tidied things up or not, we'll go ahead and carefully pick that up and transfer it onto a Silpat lined baking sheet. And once we have that center, we'll go ahead and grab our blueberries. And we will dump those right in the middle. And because they're not magic blueberries, they do not stay in a nice neat pile in the center. So we'll go ahead and grab all those rollers and bring them back to the group. And besides getting those evenly arranged, we want to end up with about three or four inches of uncovered dough all the way around. And that's because our next step is to fold that part of the dough up and over the berries to create the galette's signature appearance. And how we do that is once that first part of dough is folded up and over, we rotate this a few inches and we make another fold, which basically overlaps the first one and creates sort of a pleat. And we simply continue on every few inches, making as many folds as we need to, to get all the way around. And you're gonna have a lot of artistic freedom here, since you get to decide exactly how many folds to make and how many pleats to create, as well as how big to make that overlapping ring of crust. Okay, you can spread the blueberries out more and just fold over a couple inches, if you prefer that kind of appearance instead. I mean, do an image search for galette, and you will realize galettes are like snowflakes. So you get to do this part any which way you want. I mean, you are after all the fat Joe of your freestyle wrap dough. And speaking of lean back, make sure you give the dough a little bit of a press so it stays in place and doesn't try to lean back towards you. And that's it, once our galette is shaped, we will finish this off by brushing over an egg wash, which is not only gonna help this bake up to a beautiful golden brown, but it's also gonna act as a glue for our final ingredient. And that would be some sugar we're gonna sprinkle over the crust. And you can tell I'm not a professional pastry chef, since I'm just gonna sprinkle over some plain white granulated sugar. And what we're supposed to use is that large grain demerara sugar, or turbinado sugar. All right, you know those little sugar packets at the cafe that say sugar in the raw? That is the stuff we're supposed to be using. So am I telling you you're supposed to borrow a few of those packets if you're gonna make this? Of course not allegedly. But anyway, this is going to look fine as you'll see. And that's it. Once this has been sugared, it's ready to transfer into the center of a 400 degree oven for about 45 minutes or so, or until it looks like this. Oh yeah, that looks nice. And we made culinary history. Since for the first time ever, a galette was baked and absolutely none of the fruit juices ran out onto the pan. Okay, that literally never happened. And if you're a cynic, you're thinking, sure, that's because the filling is probably really dry. But as you'll see, it wasn't. It was the opposite of dry. But I can't show you that just yet, since what we have to do is transfer this onto a plate and let it cool down a little bit. Okay, I'd say at least 15, 20 minutes before we cut in to see what we got. So that's exactly what I did. At which point I grabbed a knife and cut out a proper wedge. And when I lifted that off the plate, I was looking at blueberry galette filling perfection. All right, those blueberries were fully cooked but still intact. And thanks to that perfect amount of cornstarch we used, the juices were not too watery and runny, but it thickened up to a very light, perfectly textured syrup. So I was very happy with that, and I celebrated with a way too small scoop of vanilla ice cream. 
at which point I decided to grab a spoon and place over a couple berries and a little bit of syrup I'd left on the plate. And I could not wait to dig into this. And yet I did. Since I decided as one final touch to do a few ribbons of lemon zest over the ice cream and my knuckle. Oh yeah, that's harder to do than it looks. But anyway, eventually I stopped fussing around and I grabbed a fork and I dug into what was a truly fantastic galette. Okay, besides the obvious flavor it adds, that cornmeal really does add an interesting textural component, which worked beautifully with that flaky buttery crust. And then of course we have that beautiful blueberry filling with that little kiss of lemon and what I thought was the perfect level of sweetness. And of course a scoop of vanilla ice cream next to something like this never hurts. So I really could not have enjoyed this anymore unless I had skipped the lemon zest on the ice cream, which I thought looked nice in the pictures, but was kind of annoying. Oh, and regarding the buttery crust, if you end up refrigerating the leftovers, this kind of dough is going to be very hard and firm when it's cold. So I would definitely let it come up to room temp or maybe heat it up a little bit before you serve it. So the butter softens and the flakiness returns. But anyway, you'll figure it out. And I have made blueberry galettes before, but I believe this is the first time I've ever done it with the cornmeal. And I really do think it worked great. But if you're not into it, just go ahead and make up a batch of our butter crust dough or any of our pie crust recipes. And this technique will work out exactly the same. Or if you're feeling really lazy, you could, if you want, roll out some store-bought puff pastry, and that could also work. Just not nearly as good as I think this does. Which is why I really do hope you give this a try soon. So please follow the links below for the ingredient amounts, a printable written recipe, and much more info as usual. And as always...